all right welcome to this video guys trey here once again and today we're going to take a break from our usual api gateway um tutorials to take a look at something that's pretty neat um i like it it's something that will help your code look a little bit cleaner and easier to read um, we're going to be talking about guard clauses today um basically a guard clause or statement is basically just um it's, it's a check to see if everything, it's like a precondition check. So it checks to see if everything um, for that function is ready to go. So if you have a function that you know um, could have a parameter that is null and you want to do a null check before you run your logic, um, you can use a guard clause for this. So um, guard clauses have uh, some inherent benefits like, like I said earlier where uh, it will make your code look a little neater and also shrink your code base a little bit because you have less um, conditional checks and if else's. So let's go ahead and take a look of an example of how to write a guard clause. So here we have a Python script and we have two functions here. One uses a guard and the other does not use a guard. So let's take a look at the one that does not use a guard first, which is this say hello function here all right so um there's nothing wrong with writing it this way but it's just uh without the guard clause so basically you do uh we're checking if the name is null or equal to none in python's case and if it is we're going to raise an exception and then otherwise we're going to return this hello uh name now the um there's nothing wrong with this code. It runs, it runs fine and everything. Um, but there's really no need to have this else statement here because if we're going to raise an exception, it's going to halt um, the program anyway. So let's go down to the say hello with guard and see how this cleans it up just slightly, ever so slightly, but it is definitely a little neater. So let's take a look at this say hello with guard. We do the same exact check. Um, if name is null or none in Python's case, um, we're going to raise this exception. But instead of having this else here, we're just going to return hello uh, name. And as you can see, this will execute the exact same way that this will execute because it's not going to run after this raise exception. Like that's just going to halt the whole program anyway. So let's go ahead and run this and see how the guard clause works so we have down here we're just printing out um say hello with guard and right now we're passing in none so let's go ahead and run this all right as we can see we're getting our exception back because it's saying error name cannot be none all right so now let's change this name um, oh, yeah. Also, I wanted to point out that, as you can see, it halted the program. Obviously, we ran through an exception, so the program halts. So we're not running this anyway. So that gives us our error, and we know what's going on. We can easy, easily debug this now because we didn't have to try to run through. Because this, this logic here is very simple, but you may have a whole lot of logic that's going on in this one function. And if you have a bunch of logic that you're trying to debug through, um, and you realize that, Hey, it just came in though, you know, it could frustrate you. So now we know from uh, from the beginning of the met the function that this is null. So let's go ahead and add something in here that's not null. I'll just do tray. Let's save this and run it again. And now it says hello tray because this guard clause allowed the program to execute. All right, so this is not the only way you can use guard clauses, just returning exceptions. Uh, we'll take a look at another example where we're actually returning a value if um, the um, guard clause fails. So I have um, a different program here written in JavaScript. So um, I have a list of famous dogs here that you may have or may have not heard of. And we want to filter this list by whatever criteria that we pass in. So we have this function here 
Let me scroll down a little bit so you can see the entire function. So we have this function here called filter by. It takes in an attribute. The attribute is pretty much one of these attributes in these um, objects here. So it's either going to be name, size, or color. And then we have a value which will equate to whatever you're passing in to be actually filtered by. And then we have the list that you want to filter. So we pass all this in and then we have our check. So this is without guard clauses. So this is how we would write this. So we have if the attribute is um, null, then we're going to say, hey, this the, the attribute cannot be null or, or undefined. We do the same thing for the list. We need a list and an attribute in order to filter. Now, when it comes to a value, we're just returning the list because if the value doesn't exist or is null, then we're not filtering anything. They just return the entire list. So we're doing that. And then else we're going to return the filtered list, depending on whatever we passed in. So this is how we write this without the guard clauses. So we have about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines of code. And if we scroll down, we can see with the guard. So this is the same function. This will behave the exact same way as that last function. Um, but this is just rewritten with guard clauses. As you can see, we only have four lines of code. And it's definitely a little bit easier to understand. I mean, both are not hard by any means to understand. But this is just a neat cleaner way to write it and it does the same thing so let's take a look at what the logic says so taking the same things we're um, seeing if attribute is a um, no and then we throw the same um, exception also here with list same thing same exception if the value then we just return the list and last but not least we return um, the list if um, everything checks out with our clauses so it does exactly the same thing. And as you can see, it's just definitely a lot cleaner. And let's actually run this so we can see what's happening. Let's actually run through and um, hit each one of these guard clauses just to make sure that they are indeed working. So first things first, let's pass in a null attribute. So we go here gonna run this using node.js so we're gonna run that and now see attribute cannot be null or uh, um, undefined and that is our first guard clause so we know that that one is working and as you can see it halts the execution of the program so let's go back let's pass in name and then let's do the list so let's make the list null Actually, we're going to do undefined for the list just so we can check both. All right, so we're just not even going to define the list and let's run it again. There we go. So it says list cannot be null or undefined. So because we haven't defined a list, then this guard clause caught that and we don't come down here trying to execute. Also, let's go ahead and do our no the value all right so the value here since we're doing name we're just going to pass in an o so basically we're checking we're filtering for anything that has an o so if it doesn't have an o we're getting rid of it um in the name so let's scroll up here and see what we should get back we should get back clifford goofy scooby and snoopy we should skip scrappy scrappy should not be in the list so let's go ahead and run this. Oh, wait. Before we do this, we need to test the value. I forgot to test this clause. So let me test that clause. So let's send this in as no. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, boom. So now we got the whole list back. So this is all the, the dogs in that famous dogs list. So now we can test it out and test the actual filter. We're going to test it with O, so Scrappy should not be in the list that we get back this time. Boom, and he is not. So as you can see, well, we got the same logic out of it, and it looks a lot um, nicer. So uh, you can definitely do some research on guard clauses. This is not really going to change too much. It's not going to make you 
you know, become an expert programmer. But it's just definitely nice to add into your bags of tricks. It will definitely make your code look a lot more professional. And I think it's neat. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next one.